When they go to the bottom rig, the truck just gets too bound up. Ty has been on the radio saying it rolls the center so much better when I'm in the high lane. His grandfather, Richard Childress, is here tonight. He's been on the radio talking to Ty about the preferred groove. He said stay high. And by the way, Richard's celebrating his birthday here tonight. He's got a truck in the lead and the three running in the top five. But so far, Ty Dillon just gets too tight when he's on the bottom. Hermie? Well, Ray, this has been another impressive performance for the 29 of Ryan Blaney in a backup truck. Remember, he wrecked in practice this morning. He's in a backup truck, currently running second. Now, his truck's a little bit tight. As we documented, he got up front by using a little bit of pit strategy. Doug Randolph, his crew chief, says if this race remains green, he'll have to come to pit road in about 20 laps. You know, but I love that, Phil. He's in a backup truck, faced some adversity this morning. Things haven't gone exactly like he would have planned, obviously, but yet he's been able to rebound and recover. His team has done a nice job grabbing him that track position, and he's taken advantage of it. And he's opened up almost a two and a half second lead right now over the third place truck of John West Tomlin. Right now, Joey Coulter has a 2.7 second lead over Ryan Blaney running in second, John West Townley running third. And how about the battle now between the 18 and the seven? Parker Kligerman has been the truck on the move. He was able to get by the three of Ty Dillon. Now he goes by the 18 of Brian Scott. He so Kligerman moves back up to four. I think the outside is the place to make the passes right now. Another great story this year has been that young man, Parker Kligerman. From one ride to another, hadn't missed a beat. In fact, he was a favorite to win out in Iowa just based on the way he had performed during practice and qualifying. Came up short uh, out there in Iowa, but again, another solid run all over John West Townley. Now, see if he can slide to the high side and grab that third spot away. He's going to run in his tire tracks now as they work through one and two. Down the back stretch, they'll go. John West Townley is holding on to the third position just behind him. Parker Kligerman, Ryan Scott, Ty Dillon. Busher, Lofton, Crafton, and PK Jr., your top 10. We talk about how the, this track has a lot of character. That's a nice way to say it's rough. These guys get to bouncing around a lot, so there are some preferred lines. Watch Ty Dillon get off the preferred line and see this truck bottom out and bounce. These things are moving around a tremendous amount during a normal lap around this track when you can run the groove you want to. But when you get out of the groove, there's a lot to deal with. Ty lost a little bit of momentum, and that's what allowed the seven of Parker Kligerman to get around him on the outside. And now looking to the inside, that 31 of James Busher. We heard Ty pedal the throttle there in the center of the corner. We heard him talk about it wouldn't turn. It was bound up in the corner a little bit more than he would like. And that's a result of being bound up. He knew if he kept the gas down, he would wind up in the outside wall. So he had to breathe that throttle. It opened the, the, the lower groove for Busher, but he wasn't able to complete the pass. And now we're starting to see a longer green flag run. We'll see how these trucks handle this longer green flag run. We've completed 74 of the 134 laps scheduled. Which is getting a run on him. It's a battle for the third spot. Jen West still has it. Parker Kligerman has chased him down now. We'll see if John West does the same technique, running right in the middle line, trying not to give him the preferred line up high. And once again, he's able to hold on to that position, but the seven has been strong here as we've completed about 16 green flag laps since the green flag fell once again. And John West is running some really good lap times. That last lap, he was the third fastest truck on the racetrack, so it's not like he's just idling around there. Yeah, and you can see these guys have put a bit of a gap over Brian Scott back there and, and James Busher and Ty Dillon. Busher finally gets around Dillon up to the sixth spot. He's just creeping his way forward. Great truck for Joey Coulter out in front. He has a three second lead over second place Ryan Blaney. The battle right now is for fourth. Townley and Kligerman. Townley running in the third spot. I should say battle for third. Townley has it, but Kligerman all over his back bumper. Now he just has to find the line to be able to get by John West Townley. You know, that's a tough job for John West to be able to focus on his line, run the line he wants to run, but then also have the pressure of Kligerman all over the tailgate of his truck. He's doing a nice job holding that position and not putting himself or Kligerman in jeopardy, just racing his line. Big momentum there for the seven. He'll look to the inside of the 0-9. This pass was made up in turns one and two. They stayed on the high line. Wasn't able to make the pass going into three and four, but has really closed the gap now between he and John West Townley. Yeah, Parker 
Bookman would love to see just a little bit of a slip by John West and see if he could go chase down the second place truck right now, Ryan Blaney. So far since this restart, John West has been immaculate. He has been very strong holding on to that third spot. Also, Joey Coulter has been extremely strong, has a 3.3 second lead over Ryan Blaney now. But the battle continues. Oh, he's caught he's back almost. Around goes Kligerman in the seven. Stays off of the wall into the grass. Caution comes out once again. The front end of the truck didn't dig into the grass. I don't believe I'd stop there, though. His tires aren't flat. Yeah, keep her going. Let's catch up to the end of the field. Come in and get our tires. He was getting really aggressive with John West Townley, trying to drive up beside him and slow his aerodynamics down by putting that right front right on John West's right left rear, and the thing just switched ends. We talked about how vulnerable the truck is on the bottom. That's a great example of it. He was almost on the straightaway, and he spun out. As you mentioned, it doesn't look like there's any sheet metal damage to this seven, but let's look again how close it was between he and John West Townley. Just right up on the side of the 909 truck, and around goes Parker Kligerman. That happened so fast, I mean, he hardly had time to react. Do you think maybe that he got he got closer than he intended and maybe jerked the steering wheel left to stay off of John West? Well, if that's what he did, John West said thank you, because they, they were on a collision course. Does a nice job of getting that truck on off the racetrack. And very fortunate when it goes. Watch Ty Dillon here, see what he sees. He sees a mess. He sees a lot of smoke. That's a great view when you come out, when you emerge on the other side of the smoke and you see nothing in front of you. So the caution comes out for the sixth time. We've already had 35 laps under caution. There's another view of it. As you mentioned, he just charged up so quickly, pulled right up to his left rear quarter panel. You know, we talk about how frustrating it is just to be able to creep up there and almost get the pass made, but not be able to quite complete it. He had an opening there, tried to jump through that opening and uh, turned around the wrong direction. That's the second week in a row that cat spun around when he had a really fast truck. See if he can rebound this week. 80 laps complete. Joey Coulter, your race leader, and it looks as though he's going to bring the lead lap trucks onto pit road now. They all follow him. The 29 of Blaney running second into his pit stall first, Hermie. And Ryan Blaney told his crew chief, Doug Randolph, that 22 is fast. We got to be better through the center. So it'll be a track ball adjustment. Four times it's an eco fuel for the 29. The 18 of Brian Scott, he is free on entry, tight on exit. And the four tires, it's an eco fuel for the 18 as well. Ray? Hermie, in the middle of the screen, you see that Zaxby's truck. This is the same exact truck that they ran in Atlanta. John West says it really handling great right through the center of the corner. In the very first pit stall, we've got Joey Coulter. He said his truck is a little bit free, but not bad enough to mess it up. A bunch of guys must have gone with some strategy. Coulter is going to roll out in about fifth position. Yeah, we see the 31 of James Busher winning the race off of pit road. He moved up four spots. How about Miguel Paluto, nine positions off of pit road. Guys, remember now, with 53 laps to go, if this race goes the distance, that's just right at our pit window. They needed to make sure they got these things full of fuel. That is a very good point. Can they make it all the way to the end? 53 laps remain. Around goes Parker Kligerman to bring out the caution. Welcome back to the Kentucky 201 from Sparta, Kentucky and Kentucky Speedway. Rick Allen, Phil Parks, and Michael Walker, Ray Dunlap, and Hermie Sadler with you from here in Kentucky. And let's go to pit road and hear from Hermie Sadler. Yeah, Rick, more strategy on my end of pit road. The 31 of Busher came to pit road, two right side tires only and an air pressure adjustment. The 32 of Miguel Paluto, no tires, fuel only for track position for Paluto, and the 88 of Crafton, two right side tires. Ray? Well, Hermie, the uh, truck that is in fourth right now would be the number 30, and they had uh, two rounds down on the track bar, went right side tires. So Coulter is the first truck that has four, and right behind him, Dylan, the same thing. You know, I like the strategy of two tires for, like, Busher. We know how hard it is to pass. We know he's got a great truck. He was mired back there in fourth or fifth. Now he's going to have some clean racetrack. We'll see what happens. And all afternoon today, Toledo had one of the faster trucks in practice, so he gets some track position. You never know what we'll see. We've got some guys on differing strategies. That's what makes this racing fun. I love pit road in the truck series. These guys go for it. Three Turner trucks in the top three right now. We'll see how it pans out. Busher and Paluto coming to the green flag. Back in the air. We're back to racing.
Dead even as they get down to turn number one. Ty Dillon looking on the outside, trying to keep the momentum up. Also the 88 of Matt Crafton down low, side by side for third. Remember what we saw that 31 truck of James Busher do down in the center of the corner on this last restart. Got a little bit of heat in those tires, and baby, he was gone around that top side. And he just did it again around Paluto, his teammate. And here comes four tires for Joey Coulter. He's going to make it three wide off turn four on the inside of Matt Crafton. Oh, off the racetrack. Catches the skirt right there on the apron for that 22. Slows his momentum down just a bit. Still holding on to that fifth spot as he gets by the 88 of Crafton. Look how fast he is down on the bottom. That was a rough front straightaway for him, but he was still able to clear Crafton and drive up beside Ty Dillon on the back. How about Parker Klinkerman? Just spun out a minute ago. He's back up into the top 10. Good for Coulter. For Coulter in the 22 on the bottom of the racetrack. His momentum's going to get him by. Coulter moving up into the top three now. Ryan Scott trying to get by that 0-9 of John West Townley. He's at the bottom of the racetrack with four fresh tires as well. Takes the spot away. Oh, did you see Lofton slide up the hill? He almost got in the side of Ryan Blaney. Blaney was able to steer up the hill a little bit and clear him. Gave him a little extra room, didn't he? Look at that 22 truck of Coulter. Just really fast in the middle of the corner. Made the move on Dylan. He's trying to do the same to PK. Charges into turns three and four, and now has to come down the racetrack a bit as Nelson PK Jr. moves him down the track. Those two side by side for position. Racing for that third spot out in front. James Busher, Miguel Paluto holding on to second. Now it's Coulter, PK Jr. and Ty Dillon. What a battle here in Kentucky. Differing tire strategies, differing pit strategies, and it always surfaces up the front. These guys battling for their lead. You know, I, I think the two tire stop was great. All that would have worked fine, but did they stay in, in the pits long enough to get them full of fuel, Michael? That's the question there. Like you said, Phil, right on the edge of their pit window, this thing goes green. I'm not sure all of them can make it. I can't imagine that they beat the other guys out of the pits that changed four tires by so much that they stayed long enough to get them full. Would have needed to have packed them full of fuel. Again, these have 18 gallon fuel cells. We talked about the pit window being 52 to 57 laps. That's on the outside, so they've got to have them full of fuel. Now Ty Dillon working to the inside, trying to take that spot away from Nelson PK Jr. Junior holding on to the fourth spot. Ty Dillon now working the lower line, trying to get back by that 30. Fights back on the outside, not quite able to clear him. And our point leader needs to just be very cognizant of the fact that he can spin out in a hurry. We saw Parker Klingerman do it just a minute ago. When you're down on the bottom of the racetrack, those things will jump around on you in a hurry. Way up the racetrack, right in front of the 30 of Nelson PK Jr. Ty Dillon takes the spot away. Guys, one thing about it, we talk about whether they got a full. They only ran about 37 laps since that most of them were on pit road before, so they're not. It's not going to take 15 seconds to put enough fuel in to fill them up. Yeah, 30's done behind you. Clear by about five or six. 30's done behind you. That's what the spotter is telling Ty Dillon, just so he knows there's no going to be any pressure out the back because the 30 of Nelson PK is slipping all over the racetrack. And look at Joey Coulter. He's going into the second spot. Coulter takes the position away from Miguel Paluto. Now he'll set his sights on James Busher. The 31 truck has been running some really fast laps out front with clean racetrack. We know the 22 of Joey Coulter has four tires. We know that truck's fast. Let's see how long it takes him to chase down Busher. We saw Joey Coulter about seven out the back. show what he can do with a fast truck at Pocono earlier this year. As you see Miguel Paluto wobble, that allows the three of Ty Dillon to get up to the inside and challenge for the third spot. So Ty Dillon on the inside, Miguel Paluto on the outside, racing for third. 